Hi, I'm Becca Farrow. We've seen in a lot of films we watched for class examples of racism and discrimination. Hollywood felt that the best way to counter such accusations of stereotyping was to begin to show them in a more positive light. These films of white guilt always had a white, rich antagonist group, and the inferior culture would be the protagonist. However, most of the films included a white male main character protagonist would be classified as a white savior, which is what I've based my research on, is the figure of the white savior and what he means in these films. These films were created in order to put minorities into a better light. The white savior itself does not represent white guilt. The white savior is an example of a continuation of supremacy of white. The white savior character enters a situation in each film where he comes in contact with the inferior culture and he comes to realize that the inferior culture is in fact superior to his own and preferable to whatever situation he's currently in. They have to face some sort of conflict and he, through that conflict, becomes the most celebrated member. In the end, the inferior culture only becomes superior through this character of the white savior. This is clearly an example of white supremacy. If the only way that an inferior culture is able to become superior is through a white character, there is no other interpretation. I will talk about each of the films that I looked at and how they relate to my thesis of the white savior promoting white supremacy. Lawrence of Arabia! And in the end, he he is not able to identify with neither his original British culture nor his new Bedouin culture. In the film, we see several of the white male figures of authority being crass, rude, just gross, the figures of authority in the, uh, in the inferior culture, on the other hand, are, wow, are portrayed as being wise and very well thought out and um, honorable. Uh, this is an example of white guilt appearing in this film. Lawrence is able to freely choose between his British culture and the Bedouin culture. He's not stuck as the minority. It's the choice that he has to switch from one culture to the other. He is not confined to one. Lawrence is the only one who's able to unite the Bedouin tribes. Eventually, he and will never be fully accepted back into British culture. Um, so the film ends with him belonging to neither culture. Dances with wolves! He basically becomes a member of their culture. He finds the serenity and peace that he's looking for through this tribe. Dances with Wolves did a really great job of portraying the native people. However, they still had a rival tribe that were the bad guys. Again, we see the gross, rude, white authority figures uh, and the figures of authority in the, the tribe are why they're very eloquent. He also assists the tribe when the rival tribe attacks them by providing them with uh, a multitude of guns and other weapons. Only through his help was the inferior culture able to overcome these struggles. Since he is a white male character, it perpetuates the idea of white supremacy. Uh, the tribe he joins are ultimately victims of the white men also, which further supports the idea of white supremacy in the film. Uh, at one point in the film, uh, the soldiers return to the post he was stationed at, and one of them asks, that, asks Dunbar if he has gone Indian. Uh, going native is a 
theme that we often see in these films with the white savior, where he chooses to defect to the other side. It's another idea of white supremacy, because he's able to make that choice once again. Alright, The Last Samurai. This film deals with both the white guilt towards uh, Native Americans about the raids, and towards the Japanese samurai as a different way of life. See again the similarities between the white authority figures and the uh, figures of authority amongst the samurai village. So people were expecting a glorious, beautiful film of a war hero type figure, so they were given a glorified and romanticized version of going native. Uh, the film ends with an intense battle scene where the samurai are seen as glorious and triumphant and smart and strategic, and the uh, Japanese military are just stuck in their rut of order. Also, at the end of the film, is able to change the emperor's mind about his decisions with his war council, uh, even though technically, according to Japanese customs, he shouldn't even be able to see the emperor at all, let alone speak to him or see his face. They needed the white man in order to overcome their threats uh, on both sides. Uh, the samurai needed him with the ninja attack and the strategy, and the Japanese needed him to train their military. Avatar! Um, in Avatar, we see again the white male authority figures uh, like Korich, who is overly masculine, overly aggressive amongst the Amatikaya people, who have, have men and women equally like high status and as important. Um, the Navi people can kind of be interpreted as a combination of uh, African American cultures and Native American culture can be seen as an example of white guilt towards both. Uh, uh, the film was intended to draw in large crowds, which it did with its visuals, and the storyline might have fallen a little bit to the side, and it was a definite reuse of the white savior storyline. Even though Jake Sully is a disabled ex-marine, um, he winds up becoming a very important person in the Navi culture, and he winds up saving them from the conflict that they face through his military knowledge and through his knowledge of the white man. First, he has the choice to become uh, the Navi through his avatar and he also is the only reason they are able to survive, even though eventually they are seen as the superior of the two cultures. There seems to be a chronological trend in the amount that the protagonist switches to the inferior culture and the uh, ability of the inferior culture to have a happy ending. It's mostly a question of who the films are made for. Money has become more of an option and more people are want to go pay for a film that has a happy ending. The white savior promoting white supremacy appears even in a few children's films that I've known. Uh, it happens in The Road to El Dorado. It happens in Atlantis, The Lost Empire. All of these films support the idea of white supremacy through the use of their white savior character. While these films may seem to be uh, promoting change through their treatment of different races, uh, they are, in fact, perpetuating white supremacy through the use of their white savior characters. And most audiences that go to see these films will not recognize this fact. Thank you for watching my presentation!